All right, today, top 10 pH probe fails. We've all made them, I've made them, Randy's made oh, them. Oh yeah. You don't have to. Number one, I did this a lot in the beginning. Most common, buying one calibration fluid. This stuff isn't just for calibration, it's for also for checking your probe and making sure that it's correct. Buy more than one, they're cheap. Yeah, actually my problem was always that I'd mess it up. And then uh, the whole purpose of this is I bought a seven and a 10, and then I found out that I messed it up in some manner or I just didn't trust it and I didn't have another one around. They're only like a dollar, so at least get two and leave some room for error. All right, so number two, if this is your first rodeo, you might not know which ones to get. Yeah, so the mistake here is not understanding that the 10 and seven calibration solution are for your tank. Yeah, so the 10 and seven here, the reason for that is your tank is probably about eight pH, uh, somewhere in there anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it falls right between seven and 10, and so you're gonna calibrate on both sides of it. However, number three, there's a different reason that you would use your probe, and it has a different set of packets as well. Yeah, so don't uh, make the mistake of not understanding that the four and seven are typically used for calcium reactors. Yeah, so your calcium reactor is probably below seven, mm -hmm. which makes it uh, the right range between seven and four. Number four, calibrating's a big pain in the butt. You don't have to do it. No, so don't make the mistake of not using these as a check on your probe to see if it even needs calibrated in the first place rather than just calibrating it. So one of the reasons that our probes are actually off is because calibrating is a pain in the butt. You <laughs> gotta get it, you gotta get it clean, you gotta go through all the series of steps. However, one of the things you can do is just stick it in the seven or the 10. If it reads it accurately, you don't need to calibrate it. In fact, it's reading it accurately, so the chances are that you'll actually make it worse, not better. Yeah. And so uh, just go ahead and spend a buck, find out if it's reading accurately, rather than recalibrating every time. Only recalibrate if the calibration isn't working. Number five, some of this stuff is mission critical and you should treat it as such. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of not swapping out or changing pH probes for those mission critical pieces of equipment, like a calcium reactor that is controlling your calcium and alkalinity and if it sways one way or the other way or if it fails, could mean catastrophe for your tank. Yeah, you don't wanna wait until I uh, get every last day out of the yeah. thing until the seal finally blows. Replace them as part of your general maintenance. And there's two uh, common applications mm -hmm. for this. So your calcium reactor, you definitely don't want it to swing or fail and then just dump CO2 in your tank. And actually similar to that is the CO2 media in your protein skimmer. Mm -hmm. You want that to manage properly as well, specifically if you have it attached to a, a solenoid to open and close. Now, if you just have the pH probe sitting in your tank as a general pulse, maybe then you can wait for it to fail. But if you have a mission critical application, treat it as such. All right, so number six, uh, the pinpoint people scolded me for this a long time ago. Yeah, don't make the same mistake of putting the entire probe in the water. It's just the tip that's doing the measuring. That's really all you need in the water. Yeah, so the reason for that is once you submerge the whole thing, salt water is really corrosive, things can work their way into it, algae can start growing into it, all kinds of different things, and you'll bust the seal on the top. So really there's no need to submerge the top, so don't do it because it will reduce the lifespan of the probe. Number seven, if you can avoid this, do this as well because it will shorten the life of the probe dramatically. Yeah, so don't make this mistake of putting your probe somewhere where it gets light. I mean, I see this one probably happening in refugiums or near refugiums where algae can grow on it, especially like hard calcareous algae and break some seals. Yeah, I used to run it in a, a 90 that I had that didn't have a sump, mm. and it would grow coralline algae all over it, and my lifespan of my, or my probes was probably about six months. Mm. It was because the calcareous algae or coralline algae was growing into the seals and bursting them. So if you can, keep it out of the light, and you'll get longer life from your probes. Number eight, sometimes you need to store these things for a while, and there's a right way. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of not storing it in some solution. We have these extra little bottles for sale. You can grab those. You can grab a pH packet, fill it up, put your probe in there. Now you can store it for longer. Yeah, so here's the deal. is uh, It's a little glass bulb on there, but it's actually porous, and it's allowing ions through, and that's what it's reading. However, if you just let it sit out and dry, all those little porous holes in the glass will clog up with salt crystals, and it'll never function again. Mm. 
Now there is a workaround sometimes is you can soak it in a packet of four to reopen those pores. It doesn't always work. You may get it partially to get it uh, come back. So you can try the four, but definitely you want to store it in the storage solution. The storage solution is designed to keep a balance so it uh, isn't transferring ions in between. So use a storage solution get longer life from stored probes. Number nine, this one's kind of hard not to do, but do your best. Yeah, so don't run the wire for the pH probe along next to high current you know, electrical outlets or other cords. There's might be some interference, you could get a wrong reading. Sometimes even the interference though is actually stable. So uh, mm. you might find that you can get the stable amount of interference, run your cords together, then calibrate it as such. So I think that it's important to note that. Whatever you've done, keep the cords there and calibrate then. Don't calibrate and then go hide the cords because you may find a, uh, like a different reading. You can always you know, check your probe after you're done to make sure that it's still reading the correct uh, number. But if you can, don't take the pH probe uh, and run it along with all your other wires. If you can, run it separately. If you can't, so be it, but check it and try to do your best. Number 10, most people don't do this one. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of not overlooking the chart that's on the front of each one of these packets. There is uh, temperature correction for a lot of these. So temperature acclimate your solution before calibrating your probe. Yeah, actually, you don't even need to read this thing. No. Just soak it in the water in the tank and get it up to temp of the tank. Mm -hmm. It'll be close enough, get a reading there. So it definitely does affect the, the temperature, definitely affects the results. So you don't actually have to manually correct that. Just make sure to, that you're not using a cold packet or a really hot one and uh, soak it in the tank of water. Hopefully don't spill it in the tank. Uh, but it, it, get it to the right temp and you'll get better results. Number 11, this one's uh, hard for me because we do it too. Yeah, so that's making the mistake of assuming lab grade actually means something. And for me, when I hear lab grade, I think lab grade results. Lab grade isn't even a thing, yeah. actually. So everybody uses it, so everybody uses it. Uh, talking to the pro manufacturers, the thing that lab grade means to them is that it has a uh, BNC connector on the end. Yeah. That's it. Uh, it doesn't mean anything to do with quality or anything. So, you know, when you see lab grade, it's more of a marketing term than it is an actual definition of quality. However, on the other side of that, there are definitely things that make one probe a lot better, meaning more accurate and lasts a lot longer than other ones, specifically in high organic and uh, salty environments like an aquarium. Yeah, so mistake number 12 is understanding what dual junction really means. So, so dual junction means there is a junction protecting the internal probe up here, protecting it from organics making it up there. It has a different solution in here so it doesn't precipitate out. It will last a lot, lot longer. In fact, if you want to learn more about double junctions or dual junctions, and actually everything about this specific probe, what makes it different, you can find it in the video right here.